they go back through the streets until you find yourself confronting these pillars and cabinets, which are like grey posts in the street. Eventually they get back to the telephone exchange in cables of this size, which is probably about a 2400 pair cable. So they're broken down into bunches of 100 pairs or 100 services. And this thing called a pothead, which is not something that you'll find in Russell Street on a Saturday night. Uh, questions on this? They often get dug up. Yeah, these are only in exchanges. You'll find paper joints out in the streets. They have their own problems when somebody puts a back of those wrong. Oops. You telephone exchanges to their nearest ones or their nearest main exchange. And we then have the exchange wired up, or these days programmed, so that if you dial a number which is not in your own local exchange, the switching equipment will direct it to an exchange that you've told it will get it on the next part of the journey. That next exchange may not all know where it's going either. Some of these blocks, but not in any of the ones that I've seen around here, also have things called lightning arresters. You'll have the option of having a battery bank in Los Angeles in June. A bird place, a Huntley bird place. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. So, we've all got a technical background, so you should at least have some idea of what you're looking at. You start off your journey in a telephone circuit and step by step by coming into a uni selector. There's a small model over there that you can look at in close detail. But every telephone service coming into the exchange has two line relays and a uni selector associated with it. We've got about 400 in, available here. Originally, as I said, this, this exchange had 3,500 lines. So, equivalent of connecting a telephone from your house is this thing like that. So when I pick up the phone, first thing that operates is one of the line relays. That calls in the uni selector, which hunts around until it finds the free first selector. The first selector gives me dial tone. Trust me. And it picks up a first selector, and there should be one there with a light on. Line relay operates, drives the uh, uni selector, the uni selector hunts for a first selector. The first selector, as the name implies, is receives the first digit in the dial. So around here, our numbering plan starts with an 8. So if I dial an 8, that select will step up eight levels and then find the second selector, which doesn't have a light on it. That takes the second digit that I dial, which in this case is the one. And that will then find a third selector, which will dial a two, which will find a next selector, which will be a fourth, which will dial a two, six. Is that one up there? And that will get us to a final selector in this case. The final selector is a little bit different in that it takes the last two digits that you dial. So the first, second last digit I dial, it will step around that number. That one. Sorry, step up that number. And the last digit that I dial, it will step into the bank. We've got an automatic call generator which sort of gives you an idea of what one of these places will sound like. And this is pretty quiet. Now think of this over the whole floor and 3,500 lines. So it's busy out, people are picking up you know. And that connects you to uh, that particular telephone line and you can do, do some tests. Um, to test if there's uh, any, any faults on the line. Um, and if it's all test OK, you can ring the telephone when they answer. Um, you can speak to them and discuss the problem that may be reported. Someone has been trying to call someone rather urgently and they couldn't get through. Um, you could test it and come up if it was busy and you could listen across it. And um, by doing some more testing, you could see that possibly they'd lift, lift the phone off the hook. <laughs> so then we could put what was called a power on the line, which is a graduated sound because if they happen to have the phone right at their um, ear, you didn't really want them to. Uh, the best of ear, That's right. Yeah. So there, there is a 
fuzzing sound on that phone there. So um, you're going to put it in your pocket, Steve. From. It must have been sitting in someone's shed or... There's, there's a couple here for some long line and turn it. I wonder where the horse-drawn cart came from. Oh, Wedding, Mother's Day. Mother's Day was terribly busy because everybody sends uh, telegrams to their mother. And then, as a kid, I used to get on my bike and go out with a great fistful of telegrams. But the best part was when you had a Tattersall's telegram, and I actually delivered two of them. One for 10,000, one for 2,000 pounds. Oh. And the best part about it was, you'd go up and you get a tip? Off. Well, that wasn't what it was. You, you, could, you couldn't sort of hang around looking for a tip. So what you used to do, you'd go, oh, it might, is there a, it might be a reply soon. You'd say something like that, it might be a reply. And you'd sort of shuffle to the woods again, waiting for, for him to open it up. Because you never told him it was a telegram. Must be that's old, right. How old are you? 76. Oh, no, I'm a, I'm a new, I'm 80. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's what I'm like these days. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, yeah, I got a bit too of them. The fellow yes. fell off at his. And it went out not that long ago, you know. Um, maybe yeah, five no, years ago. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we've been kept right up with it. Yeah, I think the Navy were the last to, that's to right. let it go. Yeah. Navy, the last yeah. to let it go. But as I say, it's. It's not dark history, it's... No, it's I'm still current. If you get on HF, there's still plenty of Morse code. Is there? Heaps in of the, it. In the, in this? Yeah, right. heaps of it, yeah. None, no sounders, not in my whole career in ham radio has ever been a sounder <laughs> on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Only in, um, yeah, probably uh, RTTY or something like yeah, that you might yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. But, uh, oh, good stuff. Uh, the only good problem stuff. we've got now, we've run out of... Uh, uh, people to demonstrate telegraphers. Yes, yeah. yeah, because when they stopped that in when they stopped that in um, in Telstra was quite some time ago. Oh, it was. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, it was in the 60s, 64. Yeah. I met a guy out at um, the research labs. Well, not in the research labs, but he was in the in one of the buildings there, and he was doing telegrams. And uh, but they were done at all via internet emails, but they come out as a printed out telegram. Yes, but I've he's seen had that, a, yes. he had a service for it. But he said it was mostly Italians and um, Greeks, weddings and stuff yeah. like that used to yeah. use the service. Yeah. Don't know if he's still operating, but he just had a little room out there and he used to just take them by email and yeah. <laughs> produce yeah. the telegram. No, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, to keep the, uh, what we try to do is keep it authentic, and we send to a fellow at the other end who uses a typewriter just like this. Yep. Just old fashioned, yep. you know, and. Um, Although the boys were all computer savvy, mm -hmm. appear to be anyway, uh, but they use this so they can show what it was like. Yeah. These are very heavy to use, but you'll notice they're all, the up, all uppercase, no upper and lowercase. Yeah. And just the figures of the uppercase, and that's so that when we went from figures to numbers, you didn't have to change case. Because if you did, the fellow would have said three words while you were fiddling around, changing yeah. upper and lower. Um, so, but these, we're running out of tapes, that's the hard thing we've got to find. Agree? Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah, yeah. We can tell them both. In the real exchange, it wasn't a problem. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to talk to them. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, this is unusual. And of course, over the years, they've used different, uh, different uh, yeah. apron strategies. Where's their money? Move them all around. Well, no, no, of course, it's a much moving around. But there was uh, a direct line that was going to the other side. Thanks, man. And then they have prevented it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're over there. Oh, right. It will be two, 50 seconds, and 40 seconds. At the third stroke, it will be two, 50 seconds, and 50 seconds.
At the third strike, it will be 257. Pretty exciting. Um, mm -hmm. um.